Hi you guys, I'm here to talk about the light dependent reaction which is just one of two of the um, stages of photosynthesis. Um, first and foremost, the goal of the light dependent reaction is to pass electrons of water to chlorophyll and then down the photosystem one and two um, reaction centers to make energy and the energy that they're going to make is ATP and NADPH and if you remember ATP is a use it or lose it energy source so this isn't going to be of much use on a cloudy day when sunlight isn't available so we'll talk about how we can use that ATP to make energy we can the plants can store later um, and the scene where it takes place um, is in the thylakoid membranes um, remember these stacks right here um, inside of the chloroplast, the stack itself is called the grana, but the individual hollow sacs are called the thylakoid. Um, and then here is a picture of the reaction center where this is actually going to happen. So I have an animation here. I showed it to my period three class. It's just an overview of um, photosynthesis, and I recommend the others watching that, but I'm going to cruise along to the players, and then um, we'll watch a couple other animations as well. But period seven, if you want to see this animation, you can find this um, presentation in the resources section of this chapter. So the first player we want to talk about is good old chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, remember, is a green pigment that absorbs red and blue wavelengths and it gets excited by the sun and that's what starts photosynthesis. So chlorophyll is, is um, a green pigment that's found in the chloroplasts of plants. Photosystems 2 and photosystem 1 are given these numbers because that's the nanometer um, of the wavelength of light that they absorb. So that's important because that's the, fo the light that excites them. And they are located on those thylakoid membranes inside the chloroplasts. And each of the photosystems, and here's a picture of a photosystem 2 and a photosystem 1, contains a few hundred chlorophylls. So here's an animation. Oh, I guess that animation's not working. Um, Electrons are what kind of start this whole process. Um, electrons, when they get photo excited by sun, so here's the sun photo exciting a reaction center, and this is um, photosystem one or two. Um, it goes first to photosystem two, the electron, and it leaves the chlorophyll model mo molecule. So you can see that electron going up right here. And it's going to travel through a series of proteins called the electron transport chain. And then it's eventually going to go to photosystem one, and then it's going to get taken away by another molecule. So electrons are what get excited in this reaction center, which again is embedded in the thylakoid membrane and begin the process of photosynthesis. Water is also really important. Um, remember, that's one of the reactants of photosystem, photosynthesis and it gets split into oxygen and hydrogen and electrons through a process that we call photolysis. Olysis means splitting, photo means sun, um, and it replaces the electrons that get excited right here. So when the sunlight excites these electrons, those, that photosystem wants those electrons back, and it'll do anything it can do to get that electron back, so it'll split water and steal the electrons from the water. Um, so it splits the electrons away, and then what's left are hydrogen ions and oxygen gas, and that's where we get the oxygen that we breathe. So here's a picture of photosystem 2, otherwise known as P680. Um, that's where the reaction center is, embedded in there. Light comes down, excites an electron, the electron gets bounced up. In the meantime, photosystem two steals that electron from water here so you can see the water two electrons get put into there and it just puts the other hydrogen ions inside of the thylakoid membrane and it just off gases the oxygen gas it's just a waste product so here's an animation of that
Photosynthesis is vital to life on Earth. Photosynthesis occurs in all the green plants and some algae. One of the first stages of photosynthesis involves photosystem 2. The oxygen we breathe is a product of the photosystem 2 reaction. This animation will describe the processes that take place within this important complex. Photosystem 2 involves several key components, including photons, light harvesting chlorophyll binding proteins, a pair of chlorophyll molecules known as the P6A reaction center, biophyte molecules, and plastoquinones, along with water and oxygen. The reaction center of photosystem 2 consists of multiple proteins and different molecules. At the heart of the reaction center is a special pair of chlorophyll molecules, P6A, which donate an electron to the electron transport system. In photosystem 2, the electron is then passed to the phyton molecule. The electron is then passed to plastoquinone QA and then to plastoquinone. These plastoquinone molecules are embedded in the D2 and D1 proteins. Once QB has accepted two electrons, it then acts as a mobile carrier for the next component of the photosynthetic electron transport system. Electrons from water are then transferred to the P680 molecules that have lost their electrons in the process. Additional proteins are involved in splitting the electrons from water. And still other proteins are necessary to build the complete photosystem reaction center. Surrounding the reaction center are light harvesting chlorophyll binding proteins. These proteins provide a way to harness the unique energy contained in light. When one of the many photons of light flooding a leaf hits a chlorophyll molecule surrounding the reaction center, it creates resonance energy. You can think of this as vibrational energy. Here you can see the chlorophyll vibrating. That resonance, or vibrational energy, is then passed to a neighboring chlorophyll molecule. It is then passed through several chlorophyll molecules until it reaches the P6A reaction center. It is that energy that results in the loss of an electron in the P6A molecule. Now we can see how these processes work as a whole. First, a photon of light activates a chlorophyll molecule. The resonance, or vibrational energy, is transferred to the P680 molecules. An electron is lost from P680. It is then donated to QA, then to QB. The P680 molecules are then reduced by the addition of an electron generated by the splitting of water molecules at the oxygen bonding complex. Since QB needs two electrons to become mobile, a second photon of light is required. The resonance energy is again transferred to the reaction center. An electron is lost from P680 and transferred via QA to the QB, which already contains one electron. The fully reduced QB is then transferred to the cytochrome P6F complex. P680 molecules are again reduced by the oxygen bonding complex. Here you can see water being split at the oxygen bonding complex. Two water molecules must be split to provide electrons to reduce P680. The oxygen we breathe is a product of this water splitting process. So hopefully that helps you understand this process called photolysis, where water is actually split into three different components. It's electrons get bounced up to this electron transport system and memorizing all the names of the um, enzymes in there is not important but just understanding that the electrons leave this reaction center photosystem 2 and they um, travel down an electron transport chain which I'll talk about next so the electron transport chain um, is just a group of compounds, they're usually enzymes, that pass electrons from one to another through a redox reaction that we talked about. And that's coupled with the transfer of protons across the membrane. So as electrons, which are negatively charged, are traveling along this path here, they do pull some protons, which are positively charged, hydrogen ions, into the inner 
um, sorry, in to the inner thylakoid space. Um, and ultimately, these hydrogens that are building up through the splitting of water and through the attraction to the electrons along that tr electron transport tra chain will make ATP, which is one of the important byproducts. Um, I sort of I describe the electron transport chain as a bucket brigade because as the electrons get passed down through these enzymes, they lose some of their potential energy. And just like when you have an old-fashioned bucket brigade where water was being brought to the fire, some of that water would spill out so the bucket wouldn't be full of water by the end. That's kind of like what is happening to the energy in the electrons. Um, but what happens is the energy, um, the electrons get bounced through this electron transport chain and then they get shot up to a higher energy level in photosystem one and then ultimately they get grabbed by a molecule called NADPH. Um, ATP, if you guys remember, is the energy currency of our cells. And that hydrogen ion concentration that I told you was accumulating inside the thylakoid um, gets to be pretty intense. There's so many hydrogen ions inside, you form a proton gradient, which means there's more inside than there are outside. And it's kind of like a pressure cooker in there or a crowded concert and the hydrogen ions start to get claustrophobic. So they want to bust a move out of there. And what they do is they move through a molecule called ATP synthase, um, which is right here. It's an enzyme. And as they move through that to the stroma, they um, are able to, they're kind of, it's kind of like a, it propels the synthesis of ATP by getting ADP and phosphate to come together. So it's like the water going through a water mill um, to create energy. The hydrogen ions going through the ATP synthesis, synthase gives the energy to make ATP. And again, this is showing the hydrogen ion concentration building up and then the hydrogen ions wanting to bust a move through this ATP synthase. So again, ATP synthase is just an enzyme that can make ATP from ADP um, and inorganic phosphate. And it makes this, if there's more hydrogen ions in the inner thylakoid space than there is on the outer space. And NADPH is the last electron acceptor in the second electron transport system. And it basically hands the electrons, the electron transport chain, hands the electrons from photosystem one to a molecule called NADP, um, which then adds hydrogen ions from the stroma to form NADPH. Um, I'm going to click on this other animation, and it may s sort of get stopped. So. I would recommend you do that, but let me just make sure. So again, this is the classic diagram of the light-dependent reaction. You've got um, photosystem to getting energy from a photon, exciting two electrons up to an electron transport chain. While that's happening, this photosystem 680 says, I need more electrons. You just stole my electrons. So it steals its electrons from hydrogen. The electrons re replenish the oxygen gas of the water gets broken off and the hydrogen ions accumulate in the, in the lumen. The electrons bounce along. Sometimes they bring in some hydrogen ions because they're negative and the um, electrons are negative. And then the electrons end up at P photosystem one, get excited by another photon, go to another electron transport chain where they're ultimately grabbed by NAD plus you can think of NAD plus as an empty taxi cab. It picks up the two electrons and it becomes a full um, taxi cab, which is then going to go to the Calvin cycle. In the meanwhile, photolysis is happening. It's creating a bunch of hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions are forming a proton gradient. They start to get claustrophobic and bust a move through um, ATP synthase right here and create ATP, which is also going to go to the Calvin cycle. Um, so that's the summary of the light-dependent reaction. There are a few